Hello and welcome. Today on ATPL Theory we're going to be talking about radio navigational aids. Thanks for your suggestions guys. First of all, let's talk about what a radio navigational aid is. Helps us go from A to B using just our instruments. So these are used for IFR flights. Now there's various types of radio navigational equipment. Firstly, I'm going to talk about ADF and RMIs. Now an ADF provides basic bearing information to practically any radio source. So we tune in to a frequency and the ADF pointer will point to that VOR. It's an old system. It's still used today, however, it's slowly becoming more and more redundant with the use of VOR and nowadays GPS. An RMI is essentially a two-channel ADF uh, with a compass slaved to the magnetic compass. In some cases, they can have an internal gyro themselves. So as opposed to an ADF, which you tend to only be able to get relative bearings because you can't change the compass card, an RMI will be slaved to always indicate the aircraft heading or will have a manual knob here where you can twist and select the heading that we're on by having a look at the compass. Now the next two, which I've grouped together as well, are Omni Bearing Indicator and Horizontal Situation Indicator. And they go together similarly like an ADF and an RMI. So an Omni Bearing Indicator is used for VOR navigation and the cheapest way to do so essentially. Slightly older technology than an HSI. Uh, it has a manual compass card normally. You select the VOR radial you want to intercept and it will provide steering to and from that radial with a to and from indicator to resolve directional ambiguity. On the other hand, a horizontal situation indicator or an HSI combines the OBI with the aircraft gyroscopic directional indicator or the compass uh, to provide essentially what is a moving map. A very, very good piece of kit. Much more expensive than the OBI, unfortunately, so not many aircraft that you will go to a fly school with will have them, but very nice equipment to have. A lot of them, uh, as well as the course deviation, uh, will indicate a glide slope on the instrument. And the last thing I'm just adding in as a bonus here is DME, which is uh, essential for our IFR navigation as well. It stands for Distance Measuring Equipment. This is a VOR DME, as you can see, VOR would only be the uh, hexagon, and if it's a VOR DME, it would have a square around it as well. These DME transponders are normally co-located next to NDBs or VOR stations, corresponding with the same frequency, allowing aircraft to tune one frequency and get all the information we need. Normally on the DME indicator, you will have three pieces of information. Distance, in this case I've written 13 nautical miles. You normally have a speed as well, in this case I've written 90 knots, and sometimes you have a time. Of course, that's just an example. So that's DME. Some equipment give you even what radio you're on, and of course you would have a frequency indicator somewhere as well. In all the examples today, the aircraft is going to be flying north. So north is always going to be at the top of all our uh, indicators. It's just for simplicity's sake. It doesn't matter where the aircraft is pointing. So let's talk about uh, some practical examples here. I'll start off with the easiest, which is an ADF slash RMI. Now an ADF, if it just had one pointer, the arrow is always going to point to the selected or tuned VOR. So you can see on the indicator, we have our little aircraft pointing to the north. The arrow, in this case the blue arrow, is tuned to this VOR. And it's indicating 135. So if we turned right towards 135, we would fly straight to the VOR. Otherwise, if it's a fixed compass rose, very old equipment, all it would give you is a relative bearing. So you would then have to calculate that relative bearing and add it or subtract it onto your current bearing. So ADF. Pretty straightforward, always point at the station. HSI and OBIs, they work pretty similar, and what most people find hard is to understand the CDI. Now, the CDI stands for Course Deviation Indicator. So it's a deviation from the course that we've selected. I'm going to start by explaining the to and from arrows on the OBI and HSI instruments. How do we find out on both these instruments where we are? Well, we need to center the CDI. So by turning the course selector on either instrument, Eventually, that will be centered. However, it will be centered in two places. It will be centered with the arrow pointing to the station, and it will be centered with the arrow pointing directly away from it on the same radial that we're at. Now, in this case, I've drawn us on radial 225. So if we turned our course selector to 225, that CDI would be centered and indicating that we are on that radial 225. And the arrow would indicate from, because it's a radial, it's 225 from the station. However, let's imagine we wanted to fly to the station. Well, we would need to change the arrow to 2. So if we turn the course selector 180 degrees either way to indicate 045, which is the reciprocal of 225,
the arrow would now say 2, because that is the course to fly to the station, independent of where the aircraft is facing, remember. In our examples, I've always indicated it north, but east could be up there, west could be up there, it doesn't matter. All it is, is a case of lining up the CDI with the arrow selector. To, if the arrow is pointing to the station, from, if the arrow is pointing away from the station. And that just gives us situational awareness as to where we are. Now, if we move this exact example up here, on the same 045 radial up here, then these would be reversed. If we set the selector to 225, it would say 2, because 225 is the course to fly to the station. And 045 would say from, because we are on radial 045 from the station. Now, the CDI indicator is another point of confusion for some. I hope this drawing clarifies it for you. So I've drawn us down here, and we are, as we can see, on radial 135. We've turned our course selector to 315, which is the reciprocal of 135, our radial, and that's given us a two indication to the station. If we turned left to 315, we would fly direct to the station, and that CDI would be centered. Let's say our instructor, or in an exam, it says we want to fly inbound 035, or even ATC tells us, fly inbound to the station on heading 035. So what would we have to do? Well, we'd select our desired course. So our desired course would be 305. So we turn the course selector slightly to the left, and it would indicate down here to 305. So 305 is now our desired. That black line would disappear, and the CDI course would disappear off one side. And the trick to this is to remember the CDI course is essentially representing the line that you want to be on. So in this case, the deflection would shoot up to the north because it's essentially a representation of the line that we want to be on. So in this case, if we wanted to fly to the station on 305, we know we would have to fly, us being here, somewhere in a northerly, northerly direction. In this case, we are heading north already. However, if we were heading south, we would know we would need to head north to intercept that radial. And as we fly north, that CDI deflector will slowly start coming to the center. And when it's centered, we know we are on 305 and we can make a left turn to 305 and then track that all the way into the VOR. I hope visually seeing it like this has given you an idea of what that CDI indicator means. So it's essentially showing you the desired path that you've selected on the course indicator here, not your actual radial. When it's centered, it's always showing you where you are, the radial that you're on. And when it's deflected, it's showing you the deflection towards where you want to be. Now, in all these examples, it wouldn't matter which way you were heading. So I hope that's cleared up any doubts you might have had, especially regarding to or from and the CDI indicator, and clarified some of the acronyms for the various instruments that we have in the cockpit. Now, for most fly schools, in our Cessnas, in our Pipers, we normally have single needle ADF, very basic, sometimes fixed rows, sometimes not. And normally you have a couple of OBIs, and if you're very lucky, you'll have an HSI. Now, OBIs and HSIs can also have a glide slope reader. And all that means is when you tune into a glide slope frequency and it detects a glide slope, then you normally have an indicator on the right or on the left with a little pointer indicating where you are relative to the glide slope. Similar to a CDI, except for vertical navigation and not lateral. Also on an OBI in the form of a vertical stick and a lateral stick for lateral navigation, vertical for vertical. Right guys, hope that's cleared up any doubts you might have had. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share and subscribe. Comment for any future videos you want to see. Have a good one.